Hello everybody, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Desutu and I have here with me my brother who currently lives in England. He's a medical doctor and today we are going to be talking about how to migrate to England as a medical doctor. What do you need? The type of documents you need, how long it takes, how much you have to save up, how much you spend actually and so much more. Um, my brother is going to be doing most of the talking Well, I'm going to be doing the I'm the interviewer So I'm going to be the one asking the questions Right, so he's going to be giving you details. I don't have this information. He does so he's going to go in detail and Yeah, introduce yourself Hello everyone. Thank you for bringing me on the platform. Happy New Year and um, welcome to 2022 uh, My name is Remy uh, as, you, as you said, I'm your uh, elder brother I've been working in the UK for the past three years. Um, so far, so good. I'm happy to share whatever information you find needful. Thank you. So, my first question is what does it take to work in the UK? What is actually this PLAB exam? Is it a requirement for medical doctors to actually write this exam? Is it compulsory to write this exam before mm -hmm. you can practice as a medical doctor in England? So, that's the first question that yeah. um, we have for this. Yeah. Video. So um, yes, usually PLAB is known as the Professional and uh, Linguistic Assessment Board exam. Um, usually, it's recommended that all foreign um, graduates, medical graduates, who did not study in the EU or Switzerland or non-UK, um, write before they can work in the United Kingdom. Uh -huh. And basically, what it does, just what the PLAB is all about, is just to make sure that you have the necessary requirements to work as what people, you know, what is known as in some other countries as a senior house officer. Uh, basically, that's what the whole plan public process is. And it's usually compulsory. Um, so long as you do not meet those countries, you do not graduate from, you know, Switzerland, EU countries, or the United Kingdom, then it's a requirement that you must go through. Okay, so um, can you please explain the application process? How many stages does it have? And yeah. Okay, yeah, so usually to start the whole process, you must have a passport, a valid passport. Yeah, and, um, and because, a national passport. Yeah, an international passport. And because the country you're coming to, the lingua franca is English. So you must do an assessment test in English, which is known as the IELTS. Yes. Um, and Unfortunately for the medical profession, and during our time when I wrote it, you need to have a minimum of 7.5 um, with a minimum of 7 in each. Um, I think the breakdown of IELTS is into reading, listening, and writing, and then there's also a speaking part of it. Mm. So you must meet those criteria. Um, I think there's been some um, consideration now that the, you need to just have a 7 overall, no longer a 7.5. Um, okay. But the minimum still stands, the uh, minimum of seven still stands. PLAB itself is in two parts, and there's a part one and then a part two. Okay. Part one is usually the written exam, um, comprised of 180 questions. Um, 118? 180. Oh, 180, yeah. okay. And uh, it's usually a three hour exam. Mm -hmm. um, those ones you don't necessarily have to write it in the UK, you can write it in your home countries. And then uh, once you pass, you get to write the part two. But of course, you cannot qualify for PLAB 1 if you do not pass the IELTS. So mm. the IELTS is a criteria first before you can actually apply, apply for, for PLAB, PLAB, PLAB 1. 1. Okay. Yeah. And then um, PLAB 2, of course, is more of the objective structured uh, clinical exam, so more known as the OSCE. So that is more of like a practical where they give you scenarios of patients. They say, okay, patients have. A, B, C, and D, what's wrong with the patient, how will you manage, and things like that. So more of, most medical doctors are familiar with that during their training um, in medical school. So those are the things. Of course, you must pass part one before you proceed to part two. Uh, part two needs is all done in the UK. Um, so you must travel down to the UK. So that means another visa applications, planning trips, and all that, and then planning accommodation when you come to On Japan. a visit visa, right? Usually on a visit visa, yes. Okay. Um, so, <laughs> there you have it. <laughs> um, so, in your own case, how 
long does it typically take to prepare for the PLAV exam? For example, the first, the first level and the second level. How long would you recommend people to prepare for this ex for this exam? Assuming they are working full time, for example, in their home countries. Well, and that's a very, very, very <laughs> And it varies for every individual okay. um, because of your personal circumstances. Um, if you're married, you have family, you have children, that is really going to take it may be a bit longer. Mm. And then if you're but if you're single, um, it may be shorter. Uh, but the very key thing that is very important that most people tend to forget is finance. You really need to save up a lot for these exams. Um, Plan one itself costs about uh, two hundred and thirty pounds if during my time I think now it's 240 and uh, plat 2 is 840 pounds I think now it's 879 wow uh, wow <laughs> and then not even to include that the IALTS is around 160 170 pounds on the tour so a lot of budgeting has to be put in place um, that's even excluding visa application fees booking flights uh, booking accommodation and then all that so it's quite a substantial um, you know it requires a lot of financial input and then it and may time. take and time so you, you need to plan usually if you are financially capable um, to something that can be achieved within a year or two mm -hmm. but of course if finance is a major thing that you need to save up for we can be saying we can be looking at to about maybe three years or so so it's not possible to write PLAV 1 and PLAV 2 in the same year? It's possible to write PLAV 1 and PLAV 2 in the same year. And that's of course based on finance. If you have enough money packed up ready. And you pass it, and the, you first pass it at the first go. So yes, it's possible to do it in only one year. Once you have those um, factors um, sorted out. Okay. So now you talked about finances and the time and everything. So how much have you spent or how much did you spend? <laughs> When you did your own exam three or four years ago, well, when did you start? So I think when I think roughly two thousand and seventeen, that okay. about. And it was he came here in twenty nineteen. Yeah, so roughly mm. two years. Um, it took me two years. Um, I can't, I can't, I can't say how much I've spent. I've spent a lot. Um, so. I had to write IELTS twice, and it wasn't because I failed. Um, the first one I passed um, to write for the exam, then the second one actually you needed it for the um, visa application to come over, and because the first one had expired, so I had to write it the second Okay, time. because IELTS is valid for yes, two years. Yes, IELTS so. is valid for two years. So um, that is already roughly 160 times two, that literally uh, pounds already. Um, then not to the exam fees I mentioned earlier, when you think about that, mm -hmm. then I think I had to travel twice, or twice to the UK. Uh, the first time was to write the exam, and then the second time I had to come back for ID check. Um, so usually once you're done with the exams, you've written part one, part two, you've passed, um, you need to come and do an ID check. So more like you, the GMC, which is the General Medical Council, that's the regulatory body in the UK for all medical doctors. Um, they are the people that you go through, you're writing these exams themselves. So they need to verify all the documents that you have. Mm -hmm. um, then you're a medical doctor, they'll check your um, primary medica medical qualification, which is more like your um, degree or certificate. Mm -hmm. So they check that, check your working experiences, um, just to make sure that everything is all. Um, Right. Genuine, genuine, yeah. mm -hmm. and then you come over and then they see you in person. Usually, it's not very, not a very long process. They just look at your documents, have a look at you, just say confirm that you have this, you have this, and that's it. That's usually the final stage of everything. Okay. So, what are the other things that he had to do to come to England to practice? So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much for that question. Um, I'm saying thank you because when <laughs> most times when we write lab. When people start this journey of writing PLAB 1 and PLAB exams, they usually think that after the exams, boom, we will start getting a job. But it's not usually the case. It, you are starting a whole new process completely. Mm -hmm. So the PLAB exam is just basically to say that, yeah, this doctor is good enough to practice in the United Kingdom. Mm -hmm. But however, 
the GMC is not going to find a job for you. You're going to have to look for a job yourself. Okay. And there are two avenues where you can find jobs. One, you can go through the NHS website and then you apply for a job. They usually have a person criteria, a specific criteria which states the kind of things they're looking for in an individual for this job application they are going for. Mm -hmm. And then you apply. Usually that is a very, very, very long <laughs> process and you're going to have a lot of headache <laughs> because it's going to ask you a lot of questions about your work, how many hours you work in a particular, in a particular field and lots of talk. In short, it's like preparing for GMC ID check itself. So most people tend to run away from that. Uh, the second option is through um, recruiting agencies. Okay. Um, so some recruiting agencies, um, like I mentioned a few of them, um, there's um, RMO International, there's um, NES, um, I think some other few, those are the ones I usually, there's ID Medical as well. Um, so I hope I'm not small, I'm not doing that. It's, no, it's, it's not, a, I'm, going to, I'm going to link, I'm going to write all this in the description box below so you can check them out. Possibly also include their websites, it is not sponsored, we are just doing yeah. this for the greater good. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, so these agencies tend to recruit you. Um, basically, you apply to them. Of course, they will ask you have you passed the exams and things like that. And then they start asking for documentation. So, basically, your qualifications, uh, birth certificates, your visa status, your passports, and all those kind of things. So, these agencies will be the ones to now sponsor your visa. So, mm -hmm. usually, your visa will be the tier two visa, mm -hmm. and that is what you use in coming. And this is depending on how many years of you stay with these agencies. So the way it works is that they can, if you sign a contract, that, okay, fine, I'll be working with you for the next two years. They will give you, they'll sponsor your tier two visa for two years, and you start working. You come over to the UK and start working. Then what happens after two years? So you renew your contract, or so you have to yeah, get a new one. Yeah. So after two years, either you renew your contract with the same agency, or you find another agency that will sponsor your. Um, visa again and then you continue working in the UK. And that way who's sponsoring you, the hospital or the agency? So if it's the so it depends on it's your employer basically. That's the hospital. No. The employer is the, the agency. No. <laughs> okay, so who's the so, employer? So 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 for example, let's say you apply to NHS and you get a job with NHS. Mm -hmm. NHS becomes your employer and NHS sponsors your tier two visa. Mm -hmm. But if you are going through the agencies what the agency simply do is that the agency would sponsor your tattoo visa to come into the UK, but they act as providers of service of labor to either private hospitals or even some NHS hospitals. So basically, the agencies are like just bring you in and then they will now channel you to different um, hospitals that require services of doctors. Mm -hmm. So that's how it works. So each time, so once you come over, so long as you are under, you have been employed, you can continue to stay in the country for as well, depending on how long your contract lasts. I don't know if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And once your contract expires and you and you don't and you're unable to get a another hospital or in another agency to recruit you, you have to go back to your home country. So yes and no. Now, if you have a tier two visa. Um, Usually it's said that if you can stay five years on a tier two visa, you can apply for indefinite leave to remain. Okay. So let's say you've been working for multiple agencies and you've been able to clock five years with these multiple agencies, you can then finally apply for an indefinite leave to remain in the United Kingdom. And I don't think thereafter you don't need any mm -hmm. um, you know, agencies to sponsor your visa anymore. And that way you remain, you become a you permanent resident in the United and from there you can get um, a citizenship, right? Yeah, so usually after about two years, after you've gotten the ILR, you can now... Yeah, you're yeah, eligible to apply for... to apply for citizenship. Okay, that's nice. And um, how long did the visa process take at the um, at the embassy from Nigeria to be specific now? So it's actually very straightforward. Um, if you're applying, if you're coming through the tier two visa, um, or the same documents um, they tend to ask for um, letter of employment the 
um, employer usually provides what we call certificate of sponsorship, known as CES. Mm -hmm. So once you have that, it's almost very quick, and there's really no there's no impediment to you coming over. It's almost like first class ticket to just come into the United Kingdom. Nobody really queries it. So long as you have a CES, you just go through the process and go to the UK and apply and. That's fine. So it's the same duration as if you were to apply for a visitor's visa, which takes like two weeks typically? Yeah, so it's still the same number of time, but because usually the employer sometimes will say, oh, apply for a priority visa and then so I can quickly come over. It doesn't make any difference to me <laughs> from my own experience and you just chop, you just take your money. So you just chop your money. <laughs> you chop your money. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I would recommend if you can avoid the priority visa, please do. It's 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 just a waste of money. It's five hundred pounds extra. So, hey, <laughs> what? <laughs> yes, it is five hundred pounds extra. So there's no point. Are they going to refund you the money? No. Oh my god. <laughs> okay. Okay. So you mentioned the NHS and working with the agency. What's the difference between both routes? Okay, um, yeah, so usually um, I'll start with the agencies first. Okay. Um, so most of these agencies um, tend to provide doctors for private hospitals. Um, so these private hospitals, um, you come in, you see patients, um, sometimes they are surgical, sometimes they're medical, um, sometimes once, usually for surgical patients, once they have operations, you're the ones that cater to them. and. It's kind of flexible um, in terms of some of these agencies have plans whereby you work for one week and then you're off for the other week. Okay. Some have plans where you go to the hospital on a daily basis and then weekends you are free. So it all really depends on how you, you know, what kind of program you want in terms of your uh, career opportunities. But usually these um, agencies are not training, they're not training, it's not a training program. Okay. Okay. So you're not really in training. You don't really. It doesn't add any. It doesn't add. They don't train you into getting more knowledge or more skills. Mm. Um, so it's more of just come work, make sure the patient is safe, and then you're fine. And um, the difference that's what that's part of the major differences in the NHS. And most times, if you spend too long in these recruiting agencies, um, it can become a disadvantage because if you now want to switch to work for the NHS, they start asking, "Have you had any NHS experience?" And they tend to pick those who've had NHS experience more than those who have it. Um, so usually, the advantage NHS has is that one, it's more in line with the uh, government system. It's more in line with um, training. So you get to see more consultants. You follow most of the guidelines that are. Uh, it's not like you don't follow the guidelines in in the private uh, facilities as well. But it's usually because you they have more number of patients you see, you have more senior people involved. You have more cases. Yeah, you have more cases that you see, so you tend to uh, get a line of training. And then, um, besides these options, um, you, if you decide that, oh, after I don't, I would like to go into training to become, you know, a consultant or go into residency, then fine. You'd still have to write exams. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so you still have to write exams, um, depending on the specialty that you want to. Mm -hmm. So it, it, I know that, I don't know whether that's within the scope of this video, but um, there's a there's a um, savvy IMG. I think that's where you can get most of the information. It gives you more details into specialty training if you want to further either become a consultant or you want to become. You know, the GP, whatever it is that you decide, I think you can have those information there. But the first step is to write the PLAB 1 and PLAB 2. Yeah. So I'm going to leave the website and links in the, down in the description box below, so be sure to check it out. If you found this useful, please give it a thumbs up so people get informed, <laughs> so people get notified about this video. Comment, share it with your friends who are medical doctors or who know people who, who want to be medical doctors so that they can um, go through and possibly work in England in the future. Yeah. yeah. So thank you very much for watching my video. <laughs> you want to say something? Yeah. So closing remarks. Closing remarks. <laughs> Save a lot of money and be intentional. Thank you. Thank you. Tell me people to subscribe to my channel. Yeah, subscribe to my channel as well. <laughs> <laughs> subscribe to my channel. Thank
thank you very much for watching. See you in my next video. Bye. Bye. Don't be too bad. Bye. 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 <laughs>